So please scrape a great big warm welcome to Sophie Carr. Thank you. Hello. There are a few things that I have loved all my life. Aeroplanes and vibrant colours. I've also liked statistics for a large portion, but not all of it, which is why the few things I have loved I do talk about. My favourite colour is purple. It's why it's in the logo of my company and why I like dresses that are purple. When I talk to people and say, what's your favourite colour? Often people go, oh, it's. Now, for me, that starts a lovely conversation and the natural progression is then, so what's your favourite pattern? And that's when they go, hmm. Now, that happens to me a lot because I work in mathematics and often people don't want to talk to me. So when I say, <laughs> what's your favourite pattern? It's because I have one. I have quite a lot, actually. One of them is the beautiful roof in King's Cross sta train station, where the column goes off into all the, the diamonds that hold the roof up. Uh, another one of my favourite patterns is the roofs in Dijon. Now, if you've not been, there are glazed roof tiles in Dijon that make the most intricate patterns, and they are there to help you find the trader that you wanted to go and talk to. Now, that is a really practical use of a pattern. If you don't believe that patterns are beautiful, well, <laughs> my PhD boils down essentially to one graph. Three lines that almost, almost meet. Yes, it took eight years to get that graph. And yes, there's a lot of work behind that graph, but it's gorgeous and it still makes me smile. So if you want to see what a really beautiful graph and a gorgeous pattern can look like, if maybe roofs aren't your thing, come and talk to me in the break. Honestly, rarely do people want to talk about PhDs and statistics, and I would love to show you my graph. <laughs> now, maybe roof tiles and PhDs aren't the area of your interest. So what patterns are going to make a difference to your life? Well, there are patterns in data, the data that you've got. And the reason you want to try and find them is it stops you relying on your gut instinct. Now, I'm all for gut instinct, and in business, it can really help you. But if I relied on my gut instincts, I would generally eat too much cheese and too much chocolate. I have to rely on the data that I'm only allowed a very little bit of cheese and even less chocolate. But the data, the data that you've got can make the difference. It can help you make the evidence-based decision making that data scientists talk about a lot. So what data? Well, if you're in business, I'm going to take a guess that either you sell a service or you sell a widget, a thing, a something, which means you've got sales data. And maybe you think that you know your sales patterns, that they're cyclic. You sell more chocolate at Easter or you sell coaching maybe more when people want to make a change in the new year. But have you ever really broken it down? And I mean really, really broken it down into four key areas. Take your sales data as a timeline over a year, over two years, however much sales data you've got. You can split it into four things. Firstly, an average. You can work out on average how many widgets, things, services do you sell over a one month, two month, three month period. You can change that. That gives you a nice average. You can look for the trend. How does that average change over time? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it the same? Then you've got the gorgeous seasonality changes, those lovely cyclics that look like sweeping curves up and down. What months do you add things? When does it go up? When does it go down? And lastly, there is that part of life you can't escape, the randomness, those random aspects you'll never be able to predict. Okay? When you do some lovely maths magic, you can put those all together and you can start to understand really how your sales data and those patterns can make a difference. So here's my thing for you when you leave today. Firstly, my top math tip. Patterns mathematically repeat. You don't need to say a repeating pattern. That's a math tip and an English tip, two in one. <laughs> Secondly, as you go home, look for the patterns that you see as you walk around. They are everywhere. And tomorrow, get hold of your sales data and plot it as a timeline in whatever package you've got, Excel, but do it as dots, not as a line, and have a good, solid look. If you see anything that starts to repeat, you might 
just might be onto something. And if you need more advice, give me a ring. <laughs>